Two years ago, we were a great nation, and soon we will be a great nation again. Well, there you go. It's official. Donald Trump is making another bid for the White House in 2024. He made the announcement tonight in Florida in front of a crowd of supporters. So now what? What does this mean for his party on the heels of midterm elections that did not measure up to Republican expectations? Let's bring the band back together. Washington Post correspondent Karun Demersion is in D.C. And Kelly Jane Torrance, an editor at the New York Post, is in New York. Of course. So, Karun, let's start with you. You know, here we go again. What was your gut reaction to the announcement? Well, look, Trump is back in the place that he loves to be, which is the center of attention. The speech was really reminiscent of many of the rally speeches that he gave during his four years as president and in the run-up to his first election as president. And um, he seems to be trying to, you know, make the Trump campaign happen again in similar ways to it happened before. And that was striking, one, because it was expected, but two, because, you know, things have changed in the time that he's been out of office. We have gone through the January 6th insurrection and the aftermath of it. It's striking that, you know, the current president is in Southeast Asia right now talking about whether a Russian missile, whether, whether a risk missile that struck Poland was Russian or not, and, and explosions that people are wondering if may pitch the world into another uh, large expanded war beyond the Ukraine. And Trump is speaking about the same the same sort of terms and, and tones that he did uh, about the border, about, you know, the economy in ways he sees it, throwing out facts that may not be completely accurate and, 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 and making fun of, of everybody that is within striking distance. So this is a return to what he considers his glory days that he wants to resurrect, and the GOP has to decide whether they are in lockstep with him and want to bring Trump back again to define um, the Republican Party politics heading into 2024. And, and Kelly Jane, as we listen to Karun there talk about tone and, and choice of words, what struck you? Well, I agree with uh, Karun that this did sound in many ways uh, like a Trump rally. Uh, and I have to say, you know, uh, hearing reports about who was there, it sounds like it was really more the B or C list uh, of Trump associates. We didn't see any of the big names uh, of, that he worked with. It was people like Seb Gorka, Boris Epstein, who who really uh, weren't weren't the weren't the most helpful people to his campaign uh, but one thing i wanted to note was the timing you know i talked to uh, various people close to trump in the last few days and some of them uh, said publicly like larry kudlow trump's uh, closest economic advisor that trump should not announce until after the georgia runoff and I talked to a few other people who would not be on the record with it, but who were also saying and said they told Donald Trump himself to please wait until after that Georgia Senate runoff. Uh, they are worried, of course, that he will have a damaging effect. And given the slim Democratic control of the Senate, that uh, one seat would be very helpful for Republicans to have. But clearly, we, as we saw tonight, Trump was all about himself and will continue to be all about himself as this campaign goes forward. So ultimately, this will be all about the voters. And I want to ask you how this is, is likely landing with Republican voters. But first, let's consider what some high-profile Republican politicians are saying. Have a listen to them. But for 2024, I think we'll have better choices. We would like to know what you think about Trump's big announcement and some of the less than flattering comments he has made about you. Well, you know, one of the things I've learned, like learned in this job, is uh, dude, when you're leading, when you're getting getting things done, yeah, you take incoming fire. This election was the funeral for the Republican Party as we know it. The Republican Party, is, as we have known it, is dead. Okay, so there's some skin in the game from some of those folks. Mike Pence, Ron DeSantis, they they all want to be president too. And I'm wondering, in, in terms of the Republican voter right now, Kelly Jane in particular, how conflicted are they? Uh, I think a lot of them aren't conflicted. Uh, of course, Trump has his base, and there are some people who will vote for him no matter what. But there are a lot of Republicans who want to see some fresh blood. Uh, after all, Trump did not win the last election. And instead of spending the last uh, you know, year and a half, almost two years, talking about his achievements, his legacy, he's talked about a stolen election that wasn't actually stolen. Uh, I know quite a few people who... Uh, have never voted Republican before that voted Republican for the first time this election, the last election, and they're not interested in seeing Trump run again. They want 
some fresh blood because they realize he really brings down the party. And we've witnessed that with the midterms when the Republicans did so much worse than expected. And people are really excited about someone like Ron DeSantis. He doesn't have the baggage. Uh, he's, you know, a happy warrior, as they uh, say here in the States. He's uh, done great stuff in Florida. And as you can see in his reaction uh, to Trump calling him Ron DeSanctimonious and threatening to reveal unflattering information if he runs, uh, he's a class act in his state above the fray, which certainly not all of the uh, candidates that were in the primary uh, for the 2016 election managed to do. And I'm thinking of Marco Rubio here. Well, I, I know certainly, I mean, your newspaper ran that headline that said, the future. So I, I clearly, I can see you guys watching out for him. C curious, um, when we talk about the timing, Karun, what does Trump gain from doing this? As I recall, this is, this is really many months earlier in the election cycle to announce than he announced for 2016. So what's the play here? Well, look, he, he's first. Um, and first counts for something in this circumstance, because anybody that comes afterwards is establishing themselves as the answer to Trump, as something other than Trump. Kelly Jane mentioned that his base is with him, his base loves him. His base is not a majority of the GOP. They are just a very, very vocal plurality there. Um, then, then the question comes, what does the GOP want instead? You know, Ron DeSantis has pitched himself as uh, Trumpism without Trump. Um, a more palatable, digestible form of Trump without, you know, the the, the scandal. But his base likes that, frankly. Um, the, you've got Mike Pence, who is the right-hand man of Trump when he was president, who's now tried to position himself as one of Trump's critics, whose book, frankly, came out today, and President Trump, the ex-president Trump, decided to stage his comeback announcement for the same day. Um, you've got, probably got Nikki Haley. You've probably got, you know, aspirations that are being fostered by people like Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio again. The question is can the party decide what of these various brands of not Trump they want? And they can, can they actually settle on one to be able to coalesce and form themselves around? Because otherwise, you're looking at what happened in 2016, where President Trump's base stays loyal and the rest of the party becomes very fractious and split among the others. The fact that now Trump has made himself the person that has to be, that everybody has to define themselves against and the rest of the party has to choose what not Trump definition they actually want, it means he's got some control here. And he may maintain some of that control for the next several weeks or several months until others decide if they're going to throw their hat in the ring and until the GOP you know, tries to weed out the number of other people that throw their hat in the ring. Otherwise, if it's a whole gaggle of people, they can't possibly best that very, very devoted base that former President Trump has. And last question to you, Kelly Jane. If you're, if you're Joe Biden right now. I, I'm wondering, what's he weighing? And, and, and what about the party at, at this point? Will they worry that oh, maybe he's not the one to challenge Trump again? Well, I think they're in a difficult position right now because uh, though they did very well, uh, much better than expected in the midterms, uh, a majority of voters in the exit polls, even those who voted Democrat, don't think Joe Biden should run again. And so while I'm sure they think that Donald Trump would be a great guy for Biden to run against again, he's already proven he can win against Trump. And Trump, uh, unlike when he was running in 2016, Trump doesn't have that outsider, I'm not a politician status. Uh, we've seen him play political games the same as uh, other politicians have played them. So, you know, the Democratic Party probably uh, would like a repre repeat of 2020, but uh, Joe Biden is going to be older. He's, uh, you know, underseen a pretty bad economy. Even, uh, you know, voters that uh, voted for Democrats, they are still concerned about the economy. So they're in a difficult position. It would have been easier if they had actually done worse in the midterms. They have an argument getting rid of Joe Biden. Now uh, he doesn't look so bad. All right. OK, listen, Kelly Jane Torrance, Karun Demergen, once again, it's always lovely to speak with you. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you.